Hey guys! Welcome to our Monday video. We are glad to see your faces. It's bright and sunny today. And we're gonna talk about feeding tubes. As you know, Mary has had a feeding tube for a little over a year, I guess so, going on a year and a half now. And we have some commonly asked questions that we see here on YouTube or people who we meet who are thinking about getting a feeding tube or have a feeding tube and are just na trying to navigate that kind of life. Yeah. And uh, we thought we'd sit down and talk about some of those questions. Today's video is sponsored by Alcresta Therapeutics. And they are the makers of Relizorb. And many of you guys have seen this. When I'm hooked up to my feeding tube, I've always got this little guy attached to me as well. So this is a little enzyme cartridge. It's full of lipase, which is an enzyme, and it helps me to digest the feeding tube formula that goes through my feeding tube and into me. And I'm very thankful for this little contraption. I think the most common question, whether it's somebody walking through the grocery store and they see me with my feeding tube, or maybe it's um, people who randomly come across our videos, the most common question is, why do you have a feeding tube? Why do you need it? And the answer is kind of a long one, but the basic answer is, I need it because I have cystic fibrosis. And because I have cystic fibrosis, my body needs a lot of help nutritionally. There's a few reasons for that. Yeah. One is that Mary's pancreas doesn't work right and it doesn't make the enzymes that a normal functioning body makes. Yeah. Uh, to, and those enzymes work in our bodies to break down foods like the fats in the foods that our bodies absorb and keep on weight. And Mary's right. body a couple of years ago started struggling with weight and right. we saw her numbers <clears throat> going down. For they're coming for us. Oh my. It's the enzyme police. For most of my life, I was able to keep on weight and maintain my weight and take in as much nutrition as I needed. And then in the last, like Peter mentioned, in the last couple of years, we've noticed my weight was dropping and my nutritional needs were being ramped up because my body was fighting harder and harder. So we basically came to a place where we said, is this the right timing? Would this make sense to add a feeding tube to my medical repertoire? And the answer was yes. So I actually started with an NJ, which is a nasal jejunal feeding tube. And I had that for a couple of weeks, but it, it was tricky for me because I kept coughing really hard, which would make me gag, and then the tube would displace. It was tricky. I was hoping that that was going to be like a a one-time wonder and I could just do the NJ, feel better, get better, but it turned out that I needed an, a feeding tube for longer than just a couple of weeks. It was going to be kind of a long-term tool for me. So what we did was when my body was strong enough, my team and I and Peter, we said, okay, let's do this, and I went in for surgery and I got a J-tube. So the J-tube goes past the stomach into the jejunum. That way my stomach doesn't have to process the formula, it goes past my stomach. And that was helpful for me for various different reasons. We really view her feeding tube as a tool in her health journey and we're thankful to have the tool that she can get that extra fuel. Basically how we looked at it was, we are asking my body to keep fighting these infections and it's a hard fight. And if I'm not able to put enough fuel into my body, it's just not fair to my body. And so we viewed it as fuel for the fight. And I think that highlights that feeding tubes are used by people with all various diagnoses and um, causes for the need of feed the feeding tube. Like not everybody with cystic fibrosis needs a feeding tube, uh, but many do because of the many uh, factors that are involved with CF. But many other people have feeding tubes for all kinds of reasons. And in each of those scenarios, a feeding tube is a tool to get the extra calories that that person needs. Another question that comes up in person with friends or also online, we get these questions as well. Can she still eat by mouth? Am I able to eat real food? And I think that question comes from the assumption, which I think if you don't know anything about feeding tubes, that might be a, like a valid assumption right. that 
if someone has a feeding tube, it means that they can't eat by mouth. Right. And that isn't the case. For some people, that might be the case. Yes. For me, that's not the case. So I can, so the answer is, Yes, I can still eat real food. I can still eat by mouth. In, In fact, fact, that's the goal. I was gonna say that. <laughs> so the goal is for me to eat by mouth as much as I possibly can and then use my feeding tube supplement, supplementarily? Supplum, supplementally? There you go. Supplement with my feeding tube to bump up my calorie intake to give my body that fuel that it needs. So maybe you are about to get a feeding tube or you are exploring the idea of a feeding tube and you're wondering, how does it all work? It's actually a pretty simple idea. I wonder who came up with a feeding tube. Basically, Mary has this extreme body piercing in her abdomen and uh, if you wanna see a video, we have a video explaining and showing how we put in this button, but basically it's a hole that goes from the outside into the inside into her jejunum. That's a J-tube. If it was a G-tube, it would go into her stomach. So basically, yeah, you've got a button or a tube. Of course, there's different styles, many different styles of feeding tubes, different placements. I've got a giant spleen taking up this side of my abdomen, so we had to put it on this side. Your surgeon, your doctors will know what to do there. So how Mary hooks up her feeding tube is she starts by opening up the button, which is just a little seal uh, in the tube that goes into her jejunum, and she puts on this little extension, which is just an access to get into the button. And she's gonna flush it with water first, and then clamp that off, take off the water. Woo! So next we just need to set up the feeding tube bag and hook it up to the pump. And we're gonna pour the formula into the bag. Fill her up. And now we need to prime the tubing as well as the Relizorb cartridge. I do it by loading the tubing into the pump. Turn on the pump. Once the tubing is all primed, you can see the formula is all the way up. Take the tip off of the tubing, screw in the Relize Orb, and put the tip back on. And now we're gonna prime the cartridge. You can actually see it filling up, which is a super fun game every time you prime it. All right, you ready? See it filling up? So inside that little cartridge are little white balls that have lipase on them, which is an enzyme that breaks down fats. And then I look in the tip of this and try to gauge when the, formu the formula is coming, okay? It's gonna probably squirt at you, hold on. I'm gonna keep my hand here just Oh, I think case. I'm close. You are close. I'm not very good at this part. Peter can judge it perfectly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. You probably can't see that. It's perfect. So then I just hook this into this, my extension. Ta-da! Unclamp and... Let's press run. That beep means we're good to go. As somebody with cystic fibrosis and pancreatic insufficiency, which is the fancy word for my body doesn't digest food well, I have 28 years of experience to tell you when a body doesn't digest food, it is not a good thing. Um, he can attest to it. If I've ever forgotten to take enzymes when I eat orally, it doesn't end well, I'll tell you that much. Stomach ache, all the things coming out, it's not great. So when I started, when I got a feeding tube, we obviously knew that whatever went through my feeding tube would need help being digested. So when I was introduced to Relizorb, I was like, yes. So much yes. This is so genius because as Mary got the feeding tube, that was one of her anxieties about being fed all day long was how do I make sure that my body has enzymes? And Relizorb is just an easy step in the feeding tube process to make that, uh, give her that peace of mind. And I was talking to somebody once and I literally said, if somebody told me you are not allowed to have Relizorb anymore, I would be terrified. 
And I know that sounds so drastic, but for real, I am just really thankful that I know that I'm hooked up to Realize Orb. I know that what's going through my feeding tube has lipase going with it. Thanks so much to Alcresta Therapeutics for sponsoring this video. And, and for creating Realize Orb. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. We're thankful for it. And if you want to uh, learn more about Relyzorb, uh, they have a new uh, Patient Connect website where you can connect with the makers of Relyzorb. Link in the description. And as, as always, always, we will, will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Good, Good night. night. And it wouldn't be a Fry Life vlog without Ollie at the end. Hey, Ollie boy. Do you want to come say goodnight? Ollie, are you awake? I think. Good night, Holly. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.